It is a great honor and privilege to join you today and share remarks for this discussion on indigenous people in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to acknowledge and congratulate the joint effort by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations FAO, the Office of the High Commission for Human Rights and the Asia Indigenous Peoples Pact in organizing this site event to raise awareness about the importance of recognizing and protecting the rights of indigenous peoples as pathway for sustainable and equitable so, so social economic development that leaves no one behind. For centuries, indigenous people with uh, the scientific, their scientific knowledge, collective land tenure system, and sustainable management of resources have preserved and conserved our planet, proving that respecting their collective human rights is a fundamental step to achieving sustainable and effective conservation goal, goals. Regardless of their role in protecting the environment, they are often excluded from the design and implementation of environment programs. I would like to cite Article 9, 18 and 19 of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which recognize the right of Indigenous people to participate in decision-making, affecting uh, their right to be consulted and to obtain free prior and informed consent in the case of initiatives affecting their rights. The United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Right of Indigenous Peoples have on several occasions highlighted the human rights challenges for indigenous people living in Asia. One of the main concerns is the lack of recognition of some state of indigenous people accompanied by a political unwillingness to ratify international instruments on the rights of indigenous peoples, such as the ILO Convention 169. The United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Indigenous People have report, reported among the main concern for the continent the lack of adequate regulatory protection for indigenous peoples custom in right over land, territories, and resources. The displacements of indigenous peoples from their ancestral land due to climate change, development of mega projects, and implementation of protected areas, and the militarization of indigenous peoples, territories, and criminalization of indigenous human rights defenders. In line with this uh, finding, my most recent report on the situation of indigenous people that lives in urban areas that I presented at the General Assembly in October 2021 showed that in Asia, indigenous people land rights are being threatened and undermined by intensified pressure from state policies that favor the private, and the private sector and the escalation of lar large scale projects for extractive industries, hydropower, dams, agribusiness, and tourism. Additionally, the report points out that climate change indu induced displacement further aggravates the situation as an indigenous peoples, specifically young people are forced to migrate to urban areas owing the shortage, shortage of resources and food. Furthermore, the report on COVID-19 recovery measure that I presented to the Human Rights Council, Council in September, September 2021 also underlined that that reports from Asia have shown that the state have been using the emergency situation and response created by the pandemic to reduce penalties for environmental violation, criminalize indigenous human rights defenders, and weaken or remove environmental impact assessment and public participation requirements. States are reportedly taking ownership of untitled lands, suppressing the effort of indigenous people to obtain communal title to their territories and delay, delaying, delaying or complicating process to recognize customary for, for, for forests. The right of indigenous people to ma meaningfully participation in the environmental decision-making process is difficult to exercise under such conditions. In parallel, please allow me to cite the policy brief published by FAO in 2020 on COVID-19 and indigenous peoples. In that brief, it was noted that indigenous territories, natural resources, and land are where indigenous people display their spirituality, culture, and exercise their right to self-governance and self-determined development, which define their approach to this disease, life, and death. This is why an intercultural approach to health is so important in this pandemic. Additionally, the brief includes policies, recommendations, and actions for government and stakeholders to ensure the cultural and physical survival of indigenous people in medium and long term. This includes recommendations to enhance 
enhance indigenous people food system and legally recognize the indigenous people collective right to land and natural resources and to address the negative impact on indigenous women due to the pandemic. More specifically, it was noted that in Asia, indigenous women asked for the effective recognition of their contribution in sustainable food system and healthcare and their knowledge and practice of natural resources management. I have already brought forth a number of key, key factors to consider when reflecting on this pandemic and its Im impact in, on indigenous people and natural resources. As this event focuses specifically on gender and natural resources rights in the context of COVID-19, I would like to dive deeper and also emphasize elements from my COVID-19 report that directly contain, connects to indigenous women's roles in implementing practices to protect natural resources and face climate change. Indeed, this report underlined that COVID-19 further exacerbated existing uh, in, uh, inequalities and marginalization for indigenous women and girls. This notably includes indigenous women's role as a frontline defendant of indigenous territories and land as they have been disproportionately affected by the state. Repression action against human rights defenders during, during the pandemic. This report further emphasized that, that COVID-19 was also an opportunity for indigenous women to show their resilience, strength, and hope for the future. If the pandemic has shown us anything it, that, that we need to change our relationship with Mother Earth. It is scientifically proven that there is a correlation between deforestation and zoonotic diseases. In this regard, indigenous women have played a paramount role in the protection of nature and ecosystems. They have led initiatives to recover from the pandemic in ways that exercise indigenous rights to self-determination and self-government while reconnecting with their traditional land and revitalizing cultural practices. We cannot forget the role of the youth and the young girls have played a, fu a fundamental role in designing and implementing measures combating climate change, measures which promote food security and protect ancestral territory as well as our natural resources. But women cannot bear this burden by themselves. The states have an obligation to recognize, sustain, and protect indigenous women and make them part of protagonists in the formulation and implementation of current and future policies and strategies on climate change, this disaster risk reduction, and natural resources management. A state must also recognize and implement gender-based approaches that address the unique impact of the climate crisis potentially affected indigenous women and girls. States should pay attention, especially consideration to indigenous women living in voluntary isolation or in a phase of initiative, initial contact on those pra practicing a nomadic or semi-nomadic way of life that face greater discrimination and risk of physical harm and irreversible loss of culture, indigenous knowledge and languages extinction. Also, particular attention should be given to indigenous elder women who are generally the holders and transmitters of indigenous knowledge, culture, and language, and require special attention due to their greater vulnerability to COVID-19. A state must adopt measures to eliminate systemic, institutional, racial discrimination and implicit bias to women and girls face accessing public health care system and emergency responses. A state must engage in a sustainable dialogue with indigenous people, particularly women, in the long-term consequences of the pandemic for cultural heritage and livelihood and adopt effective national responses that include measures to secure land rights and implement conservation approaches that recognize the close relationship of indigenous people with nature and engage them as a steward of the environment and natural resources. Finally, a state should address food and nutritional insecurity with culturally appropriate health resources that reinforce and support the resilience of indigenous food system, focusing on land-based solutions that recognize the collective territorial rights of indigenous people and the specific role 
of indigenous women. In closing, I would like to cite Article 22 of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, which remind us that particular attention shall be paid to the rights and special needs of indigenous women in the implementation of this declaration, and that states shall be take measures to ensure that indigenous women and children enjoy full, full protection and guarantee against all forms of violence and discrimination. With this in mind, I am looking forward for today's dialogue and sharing for our experiences. Thank you very much.